Well, hey, what's up, YouTube? You're with Got That Funk, and on Monday, just gone, I was fortunate enough to have a profound religious experience, and I wanted to talk about it with you and uh, try to explain why that I, as an atheist, am comfortable using the terms a religious experience to describe what happened to me on Monday. Um, I'm also going to tell you about the experience. I'm going to tell you about why I think it happened and how. I'm going to tell you about what it meant to me when it happened and afterwards and a lot else besides. It's never going to fit into one video. This will probably be the longest video I've ever made on YouTube and no doubt I'll have to chop it up and do it in sections, okay? So I appreciate your patience, but it will be worth it. Anyway, um, so yeah, on uh, Monday, one of my best friends and me, we went to see Ama. Now I've talked about Ama in a previous video, which I will obviously link in the description. Uh, the video is called A Charlatan, A Holy Man, and A Saint. And um, the saint uh, I was referring to in that video uh, is Amma. Now let me stress for the record that I hold no belief whatsoever in any god or gods. I don't believe in things like spirits, souls, ghosts. I don't believe in angels or demons or anything like that. And therefore I don't believe in uh, holy people. I don't believe there's any such thing as a saint in the literal dictionary definition of the word. But colloquially speaking, um, I think the word is quite apt for Amma. Um, Amma is a woman from India who's 60 years old. In fact, it was her birthday the day I saw her. And. Um, for the past 46 years, Amma has made it her lifetime mission to embrace the whole of humanity. And to date, Amma has hugged more than 32 million people. That's quite an accomplishment. And the reason I'm comfortable referring to Amma as a saint, again, I stress I don't actually believe there's anything like the dictionary definition of the word, but. I want you to consider for a moment what kind of person it takes to embrace that many strangers. Amma will hug anybody and everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a prisoner or a politician. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, what language you speak, what your ethnicity is. It doesn't matter who you are. Amma considers herself to be the mother of all humanity. The word Amma means mother in uh, quite a few languages, I think. Anyway, um, so whilst I want you to consider what you think it takes to hug that many people, strangers, could you invite that many strangers into your personal physical space? Could you even invite 30 people who you've never met before and probably will never see again into your personal physical space enough to give them an embrace and make them feel like you love them? Could you do that with 30 people? Amma's done it with more than 30 million people. And when she gives you an embrace, you do feel love as if it comes from your own mother. And for someone like me whose mother is thousands of miles away, this is uh, quite an emotional experience. I imagine if someone's mother has passed away, a hug from Amma would mean even more. Um, anyway, uh, they call the experience Darshan. And when I met Amma the first time, I just naturally assumed that the word Darshan meant uh, it was like a, uh, one of the Indian languages uh, for hug or embrace or something like that. But uh, I looked it up and Darshan actually means an encounter with a holy person. So um, 
yeah, I, 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 I don't know how I feel about that, but um, it, uh, the experience is certainly very moving. Now, here's, here, here, here's a, a little bit of background. Um, I personally believe that, uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll get to that in the next section of the video. Uh, let me talk about uh, the actual hug, okay? So I went to uh, see Alma. We got there at 1.30 in the afternoon, took our numbers uh, in the queue, and sat down. We knew it would take hours before we got to scene two. Uh, we had no idea that we would have to wait for nine hours before we finally got our hugs. Now, obviously we knew we were going before we got there, so there was a month's long anticipation going into it, and then nine hours of a wait. And even though uh, there are thousands of people coming and going throughout the day, and there are dozens and dozens of children, including infants and toddlers, uh, in the auditorium of Alexander Palace, the atmosphere in there is completely serene, or as serene as you can get with that many people. There's no sense of commotion or stress at all. Even the children aren't being impatient. Now, I mean, if you've ever had small children, you know that uh, they're not very good at waiting around doing nothing. They tend to get restless and they tend to get noisy when they're restless. But there's none of that all day long. I was there all day and it was, it was just completely absent. It was surreal. So you have this atmosphere and um, you also uh, obviously can watch the people um, as they approach Ama, and you can watch them get their hugs. There's like a screen, a big TV screen behind Ama. camera which has had a really perfect angle going right down over everybody's shoulders so you can actually see every person getting their embrace and some people are visibly moved before they get there and, and they start crying on, on Ama and uh, she hugs them or whatever uh, and then she what you have to do is you kneel down in front of her and she pulls you into her and uh, everybody gets something different from Ama some people's embrace lasts you know 10 15 seconds uh, other people a minute and a half two minutes maybe more sometimes each person is different each person gets something different it's not just like she goes hug next hug next or anything like that and uh, even though of course because Amma's there all day doing it she doesn't take a break not at all not to take a piss not to get anything to eat nothing um, they will give her uh, stuff to drink and occasionally a nibble um, from little sweet cakes that she likes to eat while she's up there but she'll sit on her little perch there for 12 straight hours and I estimate that she can hug at least 150 people uh, every hour at least probably more um, so while I was there for 10 hours I saw her hug a minimum of 1500 people before I finally got my turn so you have this experience of waiting coupled with the experience of watching and we didn't even start to check our clocks, our watches, uh, my companion and I. We didn't start to check our watches until we were there for two and a half hours. And I really had sort of thought only 20 minutes had gone by. Um, but in fact, hours had gone by. Watching Amma give her embraces to people and then seeing the expressions on their faces afterwards. It's quite mesmerizing. So you've got this kind of thing factoring into it. And finally after a whole day of waiting you know we finally get to join the part of the queue that's actually moving closer and closer to the stage 
And uh, by then, uh, after nine hours of waiting, you know, the, um, the impatience, uh, which is sort of, you're fighting against it because you know you've got to wait your turn like everybody else. But uh, I reckon it does kick off some endorphins and, and other naturally forming chemicals in the brain. And uh, the closer you get, of course, there's a sense of excitement, anticipation. You, you don't know what to expect, but you expect something. And uh, then you finally get there. And her assistance will help you to kneel in the right place. And then there's a line on either side of Ama, and then they basically they alternate. One person will come from this direction, she'll hug them, and the other person will come from that direction, she'll hug them, and so on. Um, and that way you can get rid of one person while another person comes in for their hug. And it's incredibly efficient how they do it. Um, and like I said, there's no sense of real bustle or commotion. It's very orderly and calm.